This week on Game Pro News, Nintendo causes headaches all over the world with the launch of the 3DS. Metacritic releases and then retracts profile rankings for game developers. Max Payne 3 is coming, while LA Noire blurs the games as art lines by featuring in the Tribeca Film Festival. Team Fortress 2 gamers dig deep for Japan, and Firemint takes Real Racing 2 HD to the next level, racing through your television. Hi, I'm Jessica Citizen. Nintendo's brand new Glasses 3 3D console has finally launched around the world, but not without some controversy. You know that optometrists have already come out and said that the handheld is suitable for children younger than 6 years old, but it seems it's the older gamers who are having some trouble with the technology. Social media sites have been flooded with complaints from gamers suffering headaches, discomfort and even migraines after using the handheld for even a short period of time. A Nintendo spokesperson has responded to the complaints, explaining that the com company has received very few negative comments and recommending that gamers take short breaks while playing. He also pointed out that there is a 3D depth slider on the device, which allows gamers to adjust the 3D effect to a level that suits them. Of course, if you are adversely affected by the 3D effect, you might need to turn it off completely. And doesn't that defeat the purpose of your new toy? Earlier this week, review score aggregator Metacritic announced that it was offering listings of individual game developers rather than simply studios. Anybody tagged as working on a game was given a profile page featuring an aggregate score for all of their work. From the outset, this caused some controversy. Bioshock creator Ken Levine received an 89. The mind behind Fable, Peter Molyneux, was given an 82, with Theme Park dragging his score down. Cliff Blazinski, on the other hand, can thank the original Unreal Tournament and Gears of War for cancelling out Geist and awarding him an 86. That was all pretty straightforward and pretty much what we expected. What we didn't expect was Nintendo hero and Mario creator Shigeru Miyamoto barely scraping in with 80 out of 100. Dismal scores for Donkey Kong Barrel Blast were to blame there. Low scores still weren't the real problem. Issues started popping up when seasoned game developers started ranking lower than recent hires or people who had fewer games in the database. Metacritic admitted that their information, gathered from sister site GameFAQs, was incomplete and not nearly as comprehensive as it needs to be. Developers complained about Metacritic's relevancy, methodology and even legality, and within a couple of days of its appearance, the individual developer rankings were dropped from the site. Something that hasn't disappeared though is Max Payne 3, who made his grand return this week via two screenshots shared by Rockstar Games. First announced for release back in 2009, we haven't really heard much about the game since. It was pushed back to 2010 to benefit from having more development time. Then it was pushed back again to 2011, but December 2010 saw the title strangely absent from the Take-Two 2011 2012 release calendar. But now we have these two shots showing that Max Payne is alive and kicking, rougher and more cynical than ever. Another announcement can't be too far away, we hope. Still with Rockstar Games, the studio has done the unthinkable. L.A. Noir has been honoured as an official selection at the 2011 Tribeca Film Festival, the first time the festival has recognised a video game. Detectives, another stolen car. I bought the car, and I've got the paperwork to prove it. You knew the car was dirty. You got some way of proving that, Sonny? Company founder Sam Hauser describes this as another step forward for interactive entertainment. The game will be exclusively previewed as part of the Tribeca Talks series on April 25th, along with a presentation on the crossover between interactive entertainment and filmmaking. While the Minecraft store was a mere April Fool's Day prank, the one from Team Fortress 2 is very much real. In the wake of the recent events in Japan, Valve announced three very special in-game hats. All proceeds from these three hats, the Humanitarian's Hachimaki for $7.99, the Benefactor's Kanmuri for $19.99, and the very impressive Magnanimous Monarch for $99.99, would go directly to the Red Cross to help humanitarian efforts following the devastating earthquake and tsunami. We're not quite sure how many people bought each individual style, but we do know that the Team Fortress 2 fanbase took just seven days to chip in more than $300,000. Take a bow. If you haven't grabbed yours yet, the hats and two special noisemakers are on sale for until April 6th, 
but when they're gone, they're gone for good. Australian developers Firemint have announced that Real Racing 2 HD will be the first game to make use of the iPad 2's capacity for full screen 1080p output. When the next major update for the game is released, you will be able to relax on your couch with your iPad 2 as your steering wheel with Real Racing 2 HD on your television. Running at a silky smooth 30 frames per second, the game looks amazing and uses the HDMI output of Apple's new tablet. If you'd written off iOS games as something to play when waiting for the bus, maybe it's time for a rethink. Till next week, I'm Jessica Citizen and this is GamePro News.